Um, somehow Heath over here has talked me into uh, making this video about some of the ways that we use our food storage around our house. We have um, five kids and so uh, it comes in handy a lot of times with a lot of things that we make. So we're just going to show you a little, one little way that we do this. We were both raised in homes where food storage was always important. Uh, my dad was a school teacher, my mom didn't work, we didn't have a ton of money, but we were always utilizing wheat, we were always grinding wheat, we were always making homemade bread. Um, I, in my opinion, one of the best parts about, about what we're going to show you, quiet please, one of the best parts about what we're going to show you is that most of what we're using for ingredients here today is older than um, three of our, two of our kids. Um, We've had, we're always adding to it, we're always, uh, she's always bottling chicken, always bottling different things to ensure that if something happens where we ever need it, we always have it. I like to buy things when it's on sale. If it's on sale, then it obviously makes it more cost effective and then stock up on it so we have it uh, for later times. One of the best things about my wife is that she's always learning about these things. She's always learning how to bottle different things, um, how to make different things. Um, she, a number of years ago, uh, one of our neighbors had a bunch of beets come out of their garden, and my wife made uh, a wonderful recipe with bottled beets, which we now eat all the time, every time we get our hands on some beets. But anyway, we're going to show you how we're, we, we do this process with our um, food storage, and we're also going to show you how we're using um, uh, cast iron, a Dutch oven in the process. Um, I, I've had my uh, Dutch oven, my large Dutch oven that we're going to use to cook the apple crisp in, um, in the oven heating up for the last 30 to 45 minutes at about 450 degrees. I'd normally do that on a, you know, on a campfire, uh, but we're trying to get everything prepped before we take it out there. It had been a while uh, since we used it, and although it was seasoned pretty good, I went ahead and cleaned it. And I know there's a lot of people that think that you shouldn't use soap when cleaning, but the idea is that if you heat it up properly, and season it right away that what's important is is to uh, make sure it's dry. So I'm going to pull it out now and, and season it. Hopefully. Okay. I'm going to Pour quite a bit in there. I'm using some napkins. I'm going to season the lid first. You see that? Set the lid out of the way. As these were heating up, my wife kept saying it smells like campfire. Try and do this without getting burned. You getting all that? in there and grab a couple more. I called my mom and my father-in-law who are avid users of cast iron and um, asked them both what they did when they cleaned um, their uh, cast iron and my mom said that with whew, with her uh, frying pan. She has a frying pan that she told me in about a five minute conversation, I bet she told me five times how much she loved that uh, um, pan. And it was a pan that came from one of two places and she wasn't sure and she said she tried to track down where it came from, was not able to confirm it. Let's go back over here and do this one more time. Um, she, it's a, a, a cast iron pan that she either came from our ranch in, in Idaho, not too far from here or it came from her side of the family, which means it was used down in Mexico over campfires. And, and uh, all right, we're done with that. And the uh, um, campfire, she said that around the outside of that frying pan is just crusted up like it's been, like it's a 120 year old frying pan, like it is. And uh, I asked her how she cleans it and she said, that really she just wipes it out most of the time 
and then she will season it again. The problem with that is if you cooked fish the night before, you're going to taste fish the next five times you cook it. Some people are okay with that. You can use soap with these things as long as you dry them out and you heat them up enough to, and you clean them to get that soap out of those pores. I'm probably going to get some, some mixed uh, reactions on that, but uh, anyway, we're now going to let this cool off. We're going to start the ingredients that uh, we're going to use to make the apple crisp. Uh, we did say what you used to season it with. Vegetable oil. Yep. Just vegetable oil and napkins. Or so paper towel, or whatever. Or paper towels, yeah. Or maybe even some sort of a rack that's not going to leave any uh, any lint or anything behind. Uh, this right here is rolled oats. It's quick oats. You can use the old-fashioned oats if you want. Um, we use quick mostly just because they quick faster, obviously. Cook faster, obviously. Use them for oatmeal. They're I canned these back in September of 2008. They're still perfectly fine and, and work just great. If um, you keep it in a cool place, maybe not in a hot garage or something like that, if you keep it cool and inside, they'll last forever. And it's not opened, obviously. These are dehydrated apples um, that I'm gonna rehydrate before I put them back into the apple crisp. These were canned in March of 2006. This says used best used within eight years so we're a little past that but they still taste perfectly fine we've had some my kids eat these just for snack just plain they love them um, and then this is the wheat this is a hard white wheat that we've had for at least 15 years um, i have a couple huge buckets of it down in our cellar they uh um that'll same thing keep it in a cool dry place it'll last a long time um i didn't want to carry the big bucket up the stairs so i just have it in this little container but so those are the things we're pretty much going to use here yet. So now we're going to rehydrate these apples. These apples are, are um, I don't know if you can tell, super crisp. They're really good. They, they still crunch even after all those years. There's a crunch. You can use fresh apples if you want to do this, but um, we just like to use our, our food storage, obviously. So it's six cups of apples is what we're looking for. That was about half a can. If, if you want to look at it that way, just kind of um, put those in there. Oops, those need to go in there. Just let it soak and we'll put the lid on it for a few minutes. Don't get it. Um, just let that sit for about five minutes till those get soft. All right, I like to use, it, the recipe calls for a cup of flour, but we're, we use wheat flour, just um, just healthier, and I have a ton of it. I've, we've got wheat coming out of our ears, so it was, um, fresh wheat is always better. Fresh ground wheat, you can use it if it's been sitting a couple days, I think. Even if it's old wheat flour, it's probably better for you than white flour. So anyways, we're gonna grind this wheat and Super easy. We love the Nutri-Melt. I don't know why it yellowed like this over the years. Kind of one of those things that I wasn't happy about. But other than that, I love this thing. We use it all the time. It yellowed because we lived on, in the Valley of the Sun. No, it's just, I don't know why it did. Anyways, turn this on. I do it to fine. Oh, you got to plug it in first. It's in. What is it? All right, Callie's gonna help us open this up. Our wheat is done. I did that whole container stuff that I had left. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. The best part is the smell. I wish you guys could smell this part. Fresh ground wheat flour. Brings back a lot of childhood memories. Except for the grinding of the wheat, everything else could be done over a campfire. And we have a very nice, um, hand grinder also that if we had to use we're we're prepared to use right right the ingredients are super simple it's a cup of flour just kind of dump i'm not an expert in here but oops we don't want to eat that cup a cup of um, oats a fourth a cup of this nutmeg fourth a teaspoon i mean yeah sorry <laughs> fourth a teaspoon goes in there there's lots of different recipes out there you can do it however you want but this is our family's one that we found super easy 
and super and, good. And good. Fourth, a teaspoon of cinnamon. We use a lot of cinnamon in our house. We buy it by the thanks to Sam's Club. By the bucket. Um, eighth, a teaspoon of salt. Sprinkle that in there. Um, best part ever. Cup of brown sugar. Sure I do. Cup of brown sugar. You never have too much sugar, I guess. All right. Um, then it needs. I got my little helpers over here, but the last thing we need to add to this, um, if you're trying to watch your figure, you might not want to watch this part. This is two sticks of butter poured in there. We um, have a microwave at our house, but we choose to not use it. So you could melt that in the microwave if you wanted to. It just has to be softened. I got a little, a little soft, but um, mix it up here. And this is good quality butter. It's not cheap. Yeah, we see. Right? Okay. okay, so now we need to get the apples out. That Just mix it up like that. Um, get the apples out and sitting right here. See how they're soft and ready to go? Okay. Just scoop it over into our Dutch oven here. You have a little apple juice there if you want to drink it. It's kind of nasty. You tried? Me and the kids tried, yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you make real out, we use a real out. That's it. You got a band-aid on, Reedy? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I kind of melted the butter a little bit too much. You need to flatten the apples out or no? Top. And there's enough vegetable oil in this to not worry about sticking or whatever, right? Well, the apples have enough juice in them too that they'll between that and the butter. Yeah, that's butter true. Butter will. There you go. That's it. Done. Good to go. Took how many minutes? Took more time to season the pan than it did to get the pan ready than it did to yep. make it. Okay, next stop, property, coals, campfire, fire. fire. 40 minutes is what we usually do in the oven. I personally don't think it's going to take quite that long. But uh, hey buddy, lay off the pine cones there, stinker. Yep. Get the steam or the coming out of it? Yep. Okay, we've had this cooking about... Almost 40 minutes. This, this glove's got thicker. Um, let me dump the ashes off this. This is the part where I don't want it to dump into the... Little bit cut. Well, it got cooked. So, apparently... 40 cooked. minutes in the oven and 35 minutes on the fire. Uh, <laughs> it's not the same thing. Well, we learned the hard way. Darn it. What a bummer. Um, we are going to do this again tomorrow, we think. <laughs> but, um, hey, look. We tried. Now we know. What do you got to say? This is what I have to learn from this whole experience. Growing up, my parents were divorced. My mom remarried when I was three. My stepdad loved to camp, loved to be outdoors, loved to cook outdoors. This is where I wish I would have paid attention to him when I was a little kid because he was an excellent cook and loved to cook outside. And apparently, I didn't inherit that from him. So listen to your dad. Pay attention to when you're young. Like, thanks for watching us. Like and subscribe.